know this video was supposed to be an in-depth look at Star Wars Episode 8 The Last Jedi with my friends Greg and Kevin, but we had some technical difficulties so we're going to have to postpone that video. In the meantime, I thought we should talk about the Doctor Who Christmas special Twice Upon a Time. I have been looking forward to this episode for months, ever since I heard the announcement that Jodie Whittaker would be taking over the role of the 13th Doctor and that Stephen Moffat would be stepping down as showrunner. I'm really excited to see Jodie Whittaker breathe new life into this character and I am so excited to see a new showrunner because, to be completely honest, I haven't been the biggest fan of Stephen Moffat's writing. I think he's great when he writes single episodes and when he tells stories that are forced to be contained to only one short period of time, but when he's given free reign over a show, I think that he has a tendency to get a little heavy-handed and overcomplicated with his plots, and he's focused so much on making everything deep that he ends up making his characters feel kind of flat, and he often sacrifices character development for the sake of plot. And, I don't know, it just isn't a writing style that I think works particularly well for Doctor Who. I think it detracts from the whimsy and wonder that characterizes this series and makes it so unique and distinct from other sci-fi series. And so I think that I'm really looking forward to see what Chris Chibnall brings to this position. I hope that Stephen Moffat comes back and writes some guest episodes because he has written some of my favorite episodes of Doctor Who of all time. Blink, obviously, The Empty Child, The Doctor Dances, The Girl in the Fireplace, The Silence in the Library. He's written a bunch of amazing episodes. I do think he's a good writer, I just think that he needs to be on a bit of a leash or he kind of just runs away with every idea and he doesn't really put enough care and detail into making sure it all makes sense and making sure that the characters stay consistent. So this episode I think actually was kind of a return to form in that it is just very episodal, very self-contained, but also it tells a rich and beautiful story in a very efficient way. So this is going to be your only spoiler warning. From this point on I'm going to be talking about particulars of the Christmas special Twice Upon a Time. If you have not seen this episode, you should go watch it before watching this video, but I'm not your dad. If you don't care about spoilers, then keep on watching. I can't stop you. So the episode starts with a clip of William Hartnell as the first Doctor and we watch it flicker into a full color clip of David Bradley as the first Doctor. You'll recognize David Bradley as Argus Filch and Walder Frey and that kooky farmer with the sea mine from Hot Fuzz. But in this role I think he does a great job of bringing the curmudgeonly but kind and pragmatic first Doctor to life. So the first Doctor meets the twelfth Doctor, played by Peter Capaldi, at the South Pole where they've both decided they don't want to regenerate. This creates a paradox which ends up affecting a World War I captain, played by Mark Gattis, who is introduced seated in a crater across from a German soldier. They both have their guns trained on each other in kind of a standoff and Mark Gaddis is talking to the soldier in English and telling him that he doesn't want to hurt him and he would only shoot him in self-defense and that he doesn't understand German and clearly this person doesn't understand English so there's no way for them to communicate that and it really underscores the futility and the manufactured nature of the situation especially with what the soldier replies and what the soldier says in response is Lass mich einfach hier, ich will dich nicht tun, bitte geh and what that translates to in English is, leave me here, I will not hurt you, please go. So, of course the irony is that they're both trying to explain that they, can't, that they don't want to hurt each other, but they can't explain that, so they have to hurt each other. And then time is frozen, and a glass alien comes down to do something to Mark Gattis at the moment of death, but because of the time stream error, he appears at the South Pole with the First and Twelfth Doctor, they all pile into the Twelfth Doctor's TARDIS, and the First Doctor makes some remarks on the appearance of the TARDIS. He also makes some low-key sexist remarks, with the, which the Twelfth Doctor calls out, which just feels a little bit out of place, because I don't really remember the First Doctor being particularly misogynistic. I don't remember him making a lot of these kinds of statements, 
and it doesn't feel that true to the character and it feels a little ham-fisted and I just know that it's going to make the anti-SJW crowd criticize the show more so I really just wish they hadn't done it because it doesn't add anything to the story and it does kind of feel like it's trying to pander and I, I, it just didn't feel necessary. But I was able to overlook that overall. I do think the relationship between the First Doctor and the Twelfth Doctor is really strong and the comedy between them when they shit talk each other and criticize each other is also pretty funny. And so the glass aliens kidnap the Twelfth Doctor's TARDIS with the Twelfth Doctor, the First Doctor, the World War One, and the World War One captain inside. When they arrive on the ship, which looks like an urn, which makes sense because the ship, ex the the glass aliens explain that they are a vault of the dead, and they refer to themselves as testimony. So I'm just going to call them the testimony for the rest of this episode, for the sake of simplicity. So, the testimony says that they're a vault for the dead, and that if the Doctor gives up the World War One captain, they'll allow him to speak to her again. Her being Bill Potts. And we get to see Bill Potts again, which was probably one of my favorite things about this episode. She was one of my favorite things about the Twelfth Doctor, and while I haven't consistently watched Doctor Who in a very long time because of the aforementioned issues I have with Moffat's writing, I have peeked in now and then whenever I had a chance or whenever I felt a whim to watch it, and I have to say that she is probably one of my favorite companions. She's just so lively and funny, and I, I really loved seeing her again, and I was also really sad to see her go at the end of the episode, but when the way they got to say goodbye was really touching and really beautiful. So the Doctor tells the testimony he's going to escape, and then he and the first doctor and the captain and Bill escape in the TARDIS and then they do an old switcheroo and they run off in the first doctor's TARDIS instead. And of course the first doctor's TARDIS is all retro -y and fun. So that was really entertaining. And then we see them go to a planet to talk with a Dalek and that felt like the most pointless thing. Like it was kind of fun to see Rusty again, I guess, but I'm also just, I don't, I, you know, this episode, it's not that it's too long, but it's that, that moment kind of felt like it dragged on, and it felt so manufactured that they needed to go access a giant database to find out what the testimony is. That just seemed so unnecessary. And then they, the testimony explains in a video, but with a new Earth scientist, that they're basically a digital cloud that uploads people at the moment of death, they upload their memories into glass vessels so that the dead may walk among you again. So it's kind of a cool idea for a way to immortalize people, and that's the idea of it. And then the doctor remarks, oh, it's not an evil plan. I don't know what to do when it's not an evil plan, which was kind of fun. And they wrap up the episode by the testimony explaining to the Doctor that he has to bring the Captain back to his moment of death. The Doctor agrees but convinces them to allow him to do it. And so the Doctor, when he finds out that it was Christmas 1914 that the Captain was taken away from, he accelerates time a little further in the day when he brings him back so that it's at the time of the Christmas Armistice. And it starts with the Germans singing Stille Nacht and the Americans singing Silent Night. This is actually right after the German soldier comes back and starts speaking again, and what he says uh, in that moment is also, that's, you know, the continuation of what he was saying, which is, Das ist verrückt, ich will nicht tun, so he, you know, this is crazy, I don't want to hurt you, so it's still that, that futility, and then we get the singing, and the look on their faces, and they put down their weapons, and Mark Gaddis starts shouting that there's a wounded man, and the doctor explains in his very doctory way that this one day, this one moment of human kindness, no other war ever did it again, blah blah blah. And I have to say, uh, the Christmas Armistice was a real thing in 1914, it is true, but it was actually much more widespread, and it was more than just one day, it was over several weeks, and it was to varying degrees in different areas where some men would only make a arrangements to go and get their dead and things like that, while others would exchange gifts and souvenirs and sing Christmas carols and play football. So it was more than just one momentous event, although that does tell a better story in the episode. I'm just a bit of a history nerd, so I thought that I should point that out, that it wasn't quite accurate to say that it was just one instance. But 
Overall, I thought it was a beautiful way to end the episode, and the Doctor says goodbye to Bill Potts and gets back his memories of Clara, which I didn't really care about because, honestly, I never really cared that much about Clara. She's not terrible or anything, I just... She, she was another one of those Stephen Moffat things that felt just overcomplicated and kind of contrived. And so, I, I, I could have taken or left that. I liked that the Doctor got to kind of like not have that wound anymore of wondering what he was missing, but at the same time, eh. The final thing I will say is the regeneration scene at the end, I think, might be my favorite regeneration scene, where he runs around the TARDIS just basically saying what he wants his future self to be. He's talking to his future self, he's talking about how hate is always foolish and love is always kind and never eat pears and run fast and he's just, it's beautiful. And then he just explodes in this vibrant burst of energy and we see him transform and look at a monitor and the first words we get are, oh, brilliant. And I love that. I love that introduction. And then she falls out of the TARDIS and I assume we're going to get her walking around in a forest with a key because that's the promo that we got for Jodie Whittaker previously. But I, I honestly it was just so, so excited to see this transformation and I thought that it was a great, great way to say goodbye to Peter Capaldi. Overall, I absolutely loved this episode. I'll definitely watch this episode again. I have to say it's probably one of my favorite episodes of Doctor Who in several years and I thought that it did a wonderful job of recapturing some of the magic that I feel has been sort of lacking from this series in the last couple of years. So let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments section down below. If you like my videos, subscribe. If you don't, I'm sure you'll tell me. That's all I have for you for now, though. Peter Zane.